Hello Internet, Adopted Mike here, and in this video I'm going to be taking a look at the Bit Phoenix Prodigy M. As you can see here, this is the Bit Phoenix Prodigy M. And this is the Micro ATX version uh, of the Bit Phoenix Prodigy. It's a fairly new chassis, and this is my first build with it, so I just wanted to do a couple of, uh, well, a quick video with a couple of things that I've noticed, maybe some pointers as well too to anybody who hasn't used it. Uh, right off the bat, um, you can see everything is upside down. That's the way that it mounts. So don't uh, try to stand on your head and watch this video. You actually are watching it right side up. This is an um, AMD FM1 motherboard. It's the ASRock A75 Pro 4M. So it's the full size micro ATX, which means that there's four. RAM slots and the board extends this way a little more than uh, a standard AT, uh, excuse me, micro ATX. We've got the power supply there. I'm using a semi-modular which I would totally recommend using a modular. There's just not much room in this case to hide cables and you'll be way happier with a semi-modular or a fully modular. Semi-modular having a uh, 4 plus 4 and a 24 pin hardwired but you're going to use those anyway but at least you don't have you know 100 SATA uh, cables and Molex cables coming out of it you can definitely pick and choose as you need same with PCI Express on this particular one uh, you can put in uh, as many as you need so that'll be nice for cable management down here this is a full size 120 millimeter uh, heat sink and you can see I mean we've got plenty of clearance for that heat sink and even down here as well too there's there's plenty of uh, clearance there for uh, putting a couple of hard drives down on the bottom if you should choose then we'll go around the front one thing I do wonder it must be uh, because it's kind of a reuse of the uh, ITX version but there's fan mounts in the front and clearly you cannot mount a fan in the front so must just be uh, must most of this chassis must just be reused from the ITX. Back here we have a huge cutout, so this is perfect uh, for installing anything uh, aftermarket or changing it out after the fact. And we can see here the uh, motherboard uh, back plate here, or I guess the motherboard tray. I guess it is not removable. Um, so, but anyway, it does cover the full AT, uh, micro ATX board there and we'll flip around again and we've got five slots so that is particularly awesome I'm glad they finally decided to do one like this I've seen a lot of mods for it uh, the ITX version to get a micro ATX motherboard in but it's cool now that you can just buy one without having to be handy with the Dremel alright so anyway that's uh, kinda of starting off into the build just pointing out a few things as I go along and I will continue on. And I'm sure a lot of people will ask how big of a video card can you fit in here? Well, this ginormous card is the ASUS DirectCU2 GTX 580 and it's a triple slot card as you can see there and it will not fit in here unless I remove the five and a quarter inch Bay. It's just hitting the top right up there and it will not fully insert into the slot. So this is a monster graphics card. In fact, I had to really finagle it to get it in there. But it won't fit, like I said, without the removal of that. So definitely if you were to put a uh, CD-ROM or DVD drive in here, you would be limited to a dual slot card and you would not be able to get like SLI or Crossfire going um, unless it was a very short card by the time you put a drive in. So I'm going to grab a drive and we'll pop one in and take a look at the clearances with that. Okay, as for a point of reference here, I've uh, installed a 7870 uh, dual fan card, graphics card in there and we'll take a look at the optical drive when it gets mounted it's still going to leave plenty of clearance for a longer graphics card to uh, kind of 
pop on in there no problem and in fact even if it is a dual fan card we're still going to have more than the more than you know that much room my finger was fitting in there no problem more than that much room in between to get some airflow to the card so that's not entirely horrible just to give you a good look at the card we're actually secured and the driver's security up there you go you got uh, enough room for it to breathe so even with that longer card you would be okay and then removing four screws one two three and number four up here will allow me to remove the five and a quarter inch bay I think oh got a couple uh I've oh, got a couple of more up top, up top here as well too, and I'm going to imagine then, I, oh yeah, I'll have one more down at the bottom. Okay, so six screws, and then we get the five and a quarter inch bay out to uh, put any graphics card in there that we'd like. So without the five and a quarter inch bay, now I can get my monster graphics card in there. Oh, but wait a minute. Maybe I can't. Oh, shoot. This is interesting. Let me just kind of zoom up here real quick. I won't be able to plug in the other PCI Express power that's located right underneath this card. I don't think I'll be able to plug that in. I better double check that one real quick. Well, they got good news. First of all, the PCI Express power actually comes out to two, so I only need to use the one that I can get to, no problem. So that should help a bit. Okay, so crisis averted there. Um, but if you were needing to use um, all of the things on your power supply, you should double check because a longer graphics card can make some of these plugs unusable. All of the peripheral plugs will be fine, but this particular card here is going to make it a little more difficult uh, to use the PCI Express ones, but I'll be able to manage. So now, we've come to, uh, in my opinion, the worst part of this case, is the side panel installation. As you can see, I've got everything in there. I've mounted the RAM. You probably can't see the RAM in the back there. It's black Corsair Vengeance. We've got the CPU fan mounted, and I've got, uh, I'm going to be mounting fans up top there as well, too. But we come into this part with the side panel and the side panel connections. It gets a little tight in there, and in fact, I'm actually opting not to use the headphone and microphone ports. I've disconnected them on the side here just to make a little bit more room. And I think I'm going to go, I mean, this, this, the side panel is made to be put on this side, but I've seen people actually putting it on the back side, which is actually what I think I'm going to do to hide the wires a little bit better plus you can't really show off the internals of your build very well when you have to take off this panel with all of its connections so my thought is I'll put this on the other side and then leave the solid panel to this side here so if I ever want to show it off you could easily just pop the one panel off and set it to the side without having to you know remove the octopus of cables so I'm going to go ahead and get started with uh, that part. Like I said, this is probably the worst thing about this case is this, uh, the side panel um, controls and USB ports and stuff like that. Other than that, so far I absolutely love this case. Uh, if this would have been on the front, I think it would be perfect. Um, or maybe even on the top and, you know, losing maybe you lose one of those fans or whatever of course then you'd have a hard time mounting a radiator if you were going to do water cooling but um, you know honestly I couldn't do water cooling anyway with that triple slot graphics card I uh, wouldn't be able to put an H100 there but yes you still could put a, 
a uh, 120 millimeter uh, radiator there. But anyway, I'm going to keep continuing on. All right, so I'm essentially done here. Um, I have addressed the issues with the video card having too much um, cabling under it. I moved some stuff around. It's a little better. It's still it's still very well supported, but it's not uh, nearly as kind of bent as it was before. Let me see if I get a better shot in there. It's difficult on an all-black case. Yeah, so the it's not as bent as it was before, so that's good. And then I've also moved the 8-pin CPU power to around and behind everything. And I've got the rear fan mounted. So now it's time to put the rest of it together and start playing around with it and see, uh, see how it sounds and how well it does.